Now, one of the most underrated features I think there is in Final Cut Pro is the timeline index, especially if you're a documentary editor or someone who's editing longer form videos with a lot of elements in them, video, titles, B-roll, adjustment layers, tons of audio, sound design, all of that stuff. The timeline index is the key to searching through all of the stuff that's in your timeline, finding it quickly, moving around your timeline quickly, and overall improving your Final Cut Pro editing experience. We're in the edit bay today, so that means it's gonna be a hands-on tutorial where we're gonna go over a bunch of tips to help you optimize, maximize, and revolutionize your editing with the Timeline Index. That was a little cheesy, optimize, maximize, revolutionize. I just kind of made that up off the top of my head and should probably cut it out, but we'll just leave it in because whatever, it's, uh, you know, making this stuff up as we go. To revolutionize, maximize, and what was the last one I said? Yeah, I don't even remember what I said. This video is sponsored by Setup, and I highly encourage you to take the time to watch the entire ad spot because there are five apps that I'm gonna show you that I have been using for years. It's almost like it's another YouTube video within the YouTube video, and it's gonna show you how you can improve your post-production or content creation workflow by using these five key apps. Thanks again, Set App, for sponsoring this video. So no more chit chat, let's just dive into the tutorial and start going through all these excellent tips. Well, first of all, how do you access the timeline index? There's a couple ways you can do it. We're gonna go over two. You can click over here by your timeline and choose index and you'll see it pop up here. You can also use the keyboard shortcut command shift two and that'll bring up the timeline index. The way that I do it is on my Stream Deck mobile, I have a button programmed to bring the timeline index up. So all I have to do is tap that button and it appears, tap it again and it goes away. If you wanna know more about Stream Deck Mobile, I'll link a video down in the description so you can check out an older video I made all about how I use Stream Deck Mobile. All right, so we've got a pretty big timeline here. This is a 33 minute video I did on my channel where we shot 16 millimeter film versus 16 millimeter digital. So what if you're working in your timeline and you wanna be able to select multiple clips from across your timeline? Maybe you have footage from a specific camera that's sprinkled throughout your edit. And instead of searching the timeline and zooming in and zooming out, pressing and holding command, then clicking on that clip, then clicking on the other clip, Clicking on the other clip, you want to be able to see it with more of a bird's eye view in a text format, like you're looking at a spreadsheet. So there's a really great way to do that using the timeline index. In this timeline, I have footage from an EOS R, an iPhone, and a C300. Let's say we want to isolate all the footage from my EOS R. All I have to do is click on index. I'm going to drag this little um, column slider over. And then I'm gonna type in EOS R. And you can see here all of my footage, which I have custom labels for. This is where the EOS R footage is. All of it is labeled here. Now, if I wanna just isolate this down to video, I can click video and that'll make sure that there isn't like a title that has EOS R in it or some other thing that has EOS R in it, just video. So I can select all the EOS R clips by clicking on one of them here in the timeline index and then hitting Command A. And you can see in the timeline that now all of the EOS R clips are selected. Let's say I wanted to remove a color correction attribute from all those clips because I felt like something was a little off and I wanted to rework the grade. So all I would have to do is come up here to edit and then choose remove attributes or use the keyboard shortcut command shift X and I could select which color effects or audio effects I wanted to remove from that clip and it would remove all of those effects from every EOS R clip. Now let's say for the A-roll I shot with my C300 here in the studio, there is something with the audio that I'm not really liking and I added that effect on the outside of the multicam. If I wanted to search for my multicam clips, I can just search in multicam and it's gonna pull up everything that I have in here that has a multicam on it. I can select it all in the timeline index and then hit Command Shift X and whatever attributes I wanna remove from those clips, I can. Maybe I wanna remove the picture-in-picture -picture effect or the flipped effect or the color wheels that I have added. This is a great way for you to select all the clips of a certain type or of a certain name in your timeline and add or remove effects to them. The timeline index is essentially a database of every element that's in your timeline and it's searchable and it's sortable and you can also filter it. It's a very powerful component of Final Cut Pro and it's one of the most underutilized features in Final Cut Pro as well. Use the timeline index to search for the elements you're looking for and you're gonna find that you're gonna be editing a lot faster and you're gonna stay in the creative flow much longer. Today's video is sponsored by SetApp. In this segment, I wanna take a look at five must-have apps for video editors and content creators 
that are available with a SetApp subscription. So what is SetApp? SetApp is a subscription-based platform that gives you access to over 240 curated Mac and iOS apps. Now the five apps I'm going to cover in this segment are all apps that I've been using for years, and I paid full price for each of them, with prices ranging from $11.99 to $39.99 for a total of about $117, the equivalent to a one-year subscription to SetUp that would have given me access to not only those five apps, but hundreds more for only $9.99 per month. And I think you, like me, might be surprised at how many apps you may currently be using that would have been included in a set app subscription. So let's take a look at these five must-have apps so you can see what kind of impact a set app subscription could have on your video editing or content creation workflows. Mosaic is a simple but powerful app that allows you to create custom window layouts. And I use it mainly with Finder to quickly arrange Finder windows for managing my data or capturing media from SD cards. I can drag a finder window to one of my custom layouts and it'll automatically resize the window. Pulltube is another app I use all the time, especially when making videos for my channel that cover Apple events. I can copy a YouTube URL and paste it into the app and Pulltube allows me to download that video or extract the audio. If you're a content creator who creates videos about tech or popular culture, this app is essential. Have you ever accidentally formatted an SD card that has pictures or video on it? Use DistDrill to analyze a storage device like an SD card and recover your formatted or deleted data. This is especially useful if you just formatted a card but didn't write any new data to it. I've used this several times to successfully recover deleted files, and it's a great tool for anybody who's regularly taking photos or shooting video. Another app I really love to use is iStat Menus. This is an app that lets you get a quick readout of the pressure on your CPU, your RAM, it can give you a bird's eye view of your data on all of your connected drives, and you can quickly check the upload and download speeds of your internet connection. And lastly, my favorite app of all of these has to be Chronosync. I've been using Chronosync for over 10 years and SetApp gives you access to Chronosync Express. I highly, highly recommend using this app to create daily backups of your main video editing drive to a backup drive. I have a Promise Pegasus 2 R8 with 24 terabytes of data and an identical one that acts as its backup. I schedule Chronosync to back up my R8 every night at 1.30 a.m. so that I always have a copy of all my most important data. So if you'd like to improve your video editing and content creation workflows with apps like these, then consider subscribing to SetApp. I subscribe to their power user tier, which gets me access to all 240 plus apps on up to four Macs, as well as access to any iOS versions these apps may have. And that's all for $14.99 per month. If you wanna check out SetApp, you can click the the link down in the description and either subscribe to a personal or team plan or start a seven day free trial. All right, so we're in a different timeline. In this timeline, I have multiple transitions throughout my video. There's four of them here and I wanna select all of them. Instead of clicking on each one like this, hitting command, clicking again, hitting command, clicking again, I wanna select them all using the timeline index. And now this transition I can search for because I know it's a slide transition. I can type in slide and it comes up over here. You can see here my playhead notes where my playhead is in relation to these clips in the timeline, but I can click on any of these clips and you can watch the playhead jump to that clip. Now I wanna select all of these slide transitions because I'm gonna change the duration all at once. So I give the first one selected, I'm gonna hit Command A. Then I'm gonna come over into the timeline and hit Control D, and you can see this changes to where I can type in the duration. These are currently one second. I want each of them to be two seconds. And then I'm gonna hit that and then hit Return, and you'll see they all change to two seconds. Now let's say I wanna change them back. They're already selected because they're selected in the timeline index. I can hit Control D again. And now I wanna make them all 12 frames or half a second. And now they all change together. Now, what if I want to change them back to one second, but then I want to change them to a cross dissolve instead of a slide? I can go ahead and select cross dissolve, double click, and every one of those transitions is going to now change to cross dissolve. You can see in the timeline index that slide search result disappeared, and now if I type in cross dissolve, they're all there as a cross dissolve. If I want to change the nature of the cross dissolve, I can select it, hit command A, then I can come over here and change them all to the film transition and change the ease amount and it applies that change to all of the clips in your edit. Again, the timeline index is a great way to navigate for very specific elements in your timeline, especially transitions, and make changes to them in bulk so that you don't have to be spending a lot of time doing one at a time in your timeline. 
All right, so right here, let's say I am working on some sound design for this section of my video. And I know that later on in my edit, I have a sound effect for a dog barking and I want to find that sound effect. So instead of like, you know, zooming out of my timeline and searching around for it, zooming back in to try to isolate where it is somewhere in here, I'm going to filter the timeline index to look at just my audio. And then I'm going to search just for dog barking. And I've got my sound effect here of dog barking. When I select it here, you can see down in my timeline that it's highlighted. I can now hit Command C and then I can go back to where I was in my edit over here and hit Command V and it's going to paste that sound effect in where I want it. So it's a great way to be able to grab something that's further down or further behind in your timeline and you want to be able to put it into a section that you're working on in your edit instead of going off hunting for it and kind of breaking yourself out of the creative flow as you struggle to find it, especially in a timeline like this that's over 30 minutes long. Now here's something that can come up. You want to add a subtle color effect to all the B-roll you shot. And all the B-roll you shot, for example, in this video was all in my studio shooting my studio display. So all the footage is going to be the same. But I want to make all that footage a little bit warmer. So I'm going to look at this first one here. And then I'm going to add a color effect. And I'm just going to slide the color temperature up a little bit to warm it up. Maybe 6,000 or so uh, color temperature. Uh, that's a little too warm, but let's just use it for an example. So I've got that there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to command C it. Okay. And all of this footage has custom labels and it's labeled as B roll, whereas this is a multicam. So if I come over here to the timeline index and search for just my B roll clips, you can see them all here. Now this is the one that I'm working on. So I don't want to select that one, but I want to select all the rest. So I'm going to select the second clip in the timeline, scroll down and then shift click the last one. And then I'm going to hit command shift V to paste attributes, and I'm going to paste that color wheels adjustment over to all of my B-roll clips. So I'll hit paste, and now all that warm effects are on every single clip in my timeline, warming them up to that 6000 color temperature. And that's how quickly you can apply an effect from one clip and copy and paste it to all the other clips in your timeline as long as you have some way of filtering using the timeline index to isolate all of those clips. Something that's really nice in the timeline index is to be able to see what's all in your timeline based on the type of clip it is. If you look down at the bottom, you have these sorting options between video, audio, and titles. So right now with video selected, I can see only video clips in my timeline. If I wanted to actually kind of look through everything that was in my timeline, same goes for audio. I can select audio and I can see all the different sound effects I use, the different pieces of score I use, everything that I have in my timeline in this list. Same thing for titles. I can look at all the titles and this is really important because if you're searching for titles based on the text that's in the titles, like my daughter, for example, makes a cameo in this video. She woke up from a nap and came out to see me while I was filming and I put a text title up that says Goldie in it. So if I type in Goldie, you can see here the title comes up and then it goes right to that spot in the timeline where my daughter made her little cameo in my video. So really powerful tools to be able to not only filter all of the content in your timeline, but of course, to be able to search it as well. Now, one thing I really like doing is selecting the tags view. As a YouTuber, I put chapter markers throughout my video so that I can have the audience be able to skip to different chapters of my video while they're watching it on YouTube. And that's a really great way while you're editing to be able to jump around to the different chapters within your video. So now that we're in the tags view, I can go over here and choose chapters and isolate it down to just the chapters. And I can skip all around my edit to the different chapters I have labeled. If I need to work on the section that's about the power cord, I can skip right to that section. My playhead goes there and I can start working on that right away. You can also isolate everything down to just standard markers. You can also look at the different keyword collections that you have. So if I want to look at clips that are in a keyword collection labeled Apple events, I can click on those clips and go through the timeline seeing them that way. So let's say my editor is ready for me to review and edit and we work in the same space. So I'm just going to jump under their computer and leave a bunch of to do markers that say what I need them to do. You can see here with the to do marker that I've left, if I double click on it, it says come back in the close angle and this is not completed. So let's say I've got a bunch of these across their timeline and they're going to work on it over the course of maybe a, maybe a day or two. But as they work on it, they want to be able to filter the markers that have been completed and the ones that have it. Well, you can use the timeline index to do that. So if we come down here, you can filter based on the markers that aren't completed. 
and you can navigate to the timeline and actually see the text of that marker so you know what you need to do for that clip. And then for the to-do markers that you have completed, you can click here and the ones that are done are not only marked in green, but they're shown as completed. Or maybe you're just leaving markers on your timeline for stuff to remind you to do. Maybe you need to add an effect or remove something or use 3D tracking, whatever it is. You can use those to-do markers throughout your edit and then for the ones that you've completed, you can check them off. And then the ones that aren't done, you can always search for them using the timeline index. So what I'd recommend is going to this Apple support article that I'll link down in the description. And this has a good overview of some of the features in the timeline index. It doesn't go quite in depth as I did or some of the other Final Cut Pro timeline index tutorials uh, go on YouTube but this is a great overview of what the timeline index is and what it's capable of. And there's even a few tips and tricks in here that I wasn't able to cover in this video. So let me know down in the comments, what tips do you have for the timeline index? Are you someone who uses it all the time and there's stuff that it does that I didn't cover in this video? I'd love to know how you're using the timeline index to speed up your workflow and keep you in the creative flow. For those of you who haven't used the timeline index, did these tips help sort of unlock what it's capable of for you so that instead of it being something that sort of annoys you that it pops up and takes up room on your timeline window, is it now something that you're gonna think about using more and more? If you really like this video going into what the timeline index can do and you've got all kinds of inspiration about how you can use it in your workflow, check out this other video of mine where I really show how you can unleash the power of the browser in Final Cut Pro. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. And don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.